I think about 90% or more of a lift that's missed is because of improper setup right when they sit up and right when they start to move down. That's the whole thing of it. If something is a little bit off, as soon as you start to come up, you can't make an adjustment with a heavy load on your back. It's almost yeah. impossible. I mean, we're looking at a lot of different things, but do you look at the bar path? first or do you look at their body structure mechanics? I, I look first? up how their setup is. I think about 90% or more of a lift that's missed is because of improper setup right when they sit up and right when they start to move down. That's the whole thing of it. And because you got to put yourself in the right position where your body will cooperate with your mind to do it right and make it feel good. Then it's ready to perform optimally right away. If something is a little bit off, as soon as you start to come up, you can't make an adjustment with a heavy load on your back. It's almost impossible. So to reel that back, you're talking about in the squat. So you're before the squat, everything that happens before the squat command yep. is the most important. Uh, yes, 100%. And then if you're to walk that through your head, say you're, you're squatting, what, what does that look like? How do you I, verbalize I, that? I, I watch how they get under the bar and what they do right when they get under the bar. Sometimes pe some people just set it on their back and take it off. Well, you haven't locked everything in with your shoulders and lats. What I try to do is take every muscle from the lower part of my neck to my lower back and squeeze it into my spine, especially the lower lats. So when I have, I don't have people lift their chest. I have them pick up their sternum lower. That locks in your lower lats. And once they do that, as soon as they take off, they should already be braced. Because once, like I said, once you get that heavy load on your back, it's hard to brace and it's hard to do things to make that lift go the way you want with the proper setup. So like if I have a heavy load on my back and I walk back and I'm not braced, then I try to brace. You're not going to be in the same position as you were at if you did it at the start. Mm -hmm. So right when you go down, most of the time you'll hit the bottom and it'll fall forward a little bit. It's, it's usually because of a brace. Mm -hmm. A lot of people brace at the beginning, and then by the time they get down to the bottom, they don't brace anymore. They don't think about it anymore. They don't think about squeezing it anymore. That, that'll be boop. That's when you fall forward. Mm -hmm. And if you're, you're, everything isn't tight enough on the top end, that's, those are the two things. Walk me through what that is for <coughs> a bench press then. Because the setup is, you, there's a setup it's, there. It's, it's, it's all similar. And for me... For me to keep it simple, I just raise my sternum as high as I can from here and it starts locking everything up and I feel my back tighten. If I can do that and then when I let the weight down, I don't let it down, I'll pull it down with my lats even more. So it's creating more and more tension. And then when I get the, down to the bottom, I can sit there all day because mm -hmm. I'm that tight. But if something happens where you lose that brace or you lose anything, that's going to happen right away. You can't manage it. You're done. So what are you doing before the bar comes out of the racks? I'm, I, I, I take my shoulders and I'm wiggling them. Same I'm thing. Pulling, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing almost the same thing I do in the squat. Okay. Now, if you were to pick yourself, do a standing curl with a barbell, your sternum has to be up. An overhead press, your sternum has to be up. A deadlift, your sternum has to be up. A bent over row, your sternum has to be up. It's kind of your mind putting everything in the right spot to keep it safe. Mm -hmm. And then if you if it's safe, it's comfortable, and you can lift a lot of weight because you're in the right position. Mm -hmm. So the sternum up thing is the most important thing for me. And then it's bracing. Even when you bench, you should lock your abs a little bit or else it will affect your back. Mm -hmm. Deadlift then. Mm-hmm. The, the deadlift there. is cool. Um, I'll walk up to the bar. I'll put my shins against the bar, even though it'll move out a little bit when I go down. I will squat, then bend over. I don't bend over to the bar because then your butt sits up way too hard. It's, hard. it's harder to get it down. So I'll bend my hips to get down to the bar, grab the bar. As I'm pulling the slack out, my wiggle is actually, I'm wiggling myself in closer to the bar. What that does is it activates your hips. So your butt's working right from the very beginning. And then as I pull more slack out, that's when I'm pulling my sternum up and I'm mm -hmm. locking my lats in tight. 
So now, even even if uh, the weight's heavy, I don't bend over because everything is working as one unit. So, like, even though my, you know, you got an upper body and lower body, I'm working the, making them work together because they're locked in. And you know how, like, when you get up past your knees, people yell hips, hips. My hips are already working. They're they're ready working from the from the bottom all the way up. Mm-hmm. The problem people have with their hips is they use their hips too late. So the weight is traveling at a certain rate of speed. People usually say hips when it's over your knees. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to say hips when it's below your knees because by the time the weight gets over your knees, that's when your brain's going to want to use them. Mm-hmm. So it's just a timing issue. Okay. So that's all it is. If I if I activate my hips on the bottom, my sternum's up. I got the slack pulled out. Every, my whole body is like a it's like a rubber ball. It's ready to just mm-hmm. jump. And then boom, up, and then hips right away. That so when I, so when I look at the accessories that you used, right, the the <coughs> high bar, it's mm-hmm. basically reinforcing the same things. Yep. Right. The bent over row yep. is reinforcing the, the stiff leg. Is reinforcing yep. the, the close grip. Is reinforcing all of it. So all those accessories outside of just being exercises for the lats, mm-hmm. triceps, whatever it is, it's reinforcing the mechanics. What has to be used. Yes. In order to keep you in the right spot. Yes. So it's, it's more repetitions, though, of how to get yourself into the best starting and heavy. position. Like when I did bent over rows, I, I would normally, uh, unless we were like into the 500s, yeah. uh, I wouldn't use a belt at all. And I would never let it touch the ground. What that did is it made my abs have to brace and my back have to move at the same time. And stay braced, Mm -hmm. which is what happens in the squat or the deadlift. So I tried to kind of mimic those Mm -hmm. feelings on exercise. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to get that by doing lightweight. You might get really pretty cute little muscles. Yeah. But you're not going to get the thick structural strength that you need to be able to last. Mm -hmm. Did you you ever throw your back out? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I relaxed on the bottom of a, uh, I was standing on a, one of the old time big fat hundred pound plates with no belt. And I pulled a pretty easy 837 with no belt for a double. And I relaxed on the bottom on the second one. And uh, the iliosacral ligament that runs down there, I like, it stretched out. And that was a lot of pain for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And it was just something little, but that's all it takes because you're using heavy weight. Yeah. How did you mitigate and work around that? I just did electro stim constantly. If I tried to stretch it, it aggravated it. I didn't need to get adjusted because it wasn't out. I just stim the crap out of it for a couple of weeks, like four times a day. 